What's up? I am Platinum Mike, and in this video, I'll guide you through Platinuming Resident Evil 2. If you're looking for a quicker Platinum Trophy roadmap with minimal spoilers, I'll link my other video in this video's description and put a link in the cards in the upper right hand corner of the video. We'll be following the same steps as the roadmap with a bit more detail on the trophies. We will be doing six complete playthroughs, but you can save a run if you'd like and do it in five if you feel like it. We'll start off with Leon on normal difficulty to prepare ourselves for a hardcore mode, which we'll need to do later on. After this run, we'll follow it with a B run or B scenario with Claire. You can do it vice versa, doing Claire's A run and Leon's B run. It's really up to you. At some point, you will have to do an A and B side run for the characters you didn't in order to get the B run specific files for both characters. So just keep that in mind. Also, you will want to get the Mr. Raccoon statues when you come across them at any time in these four runs. It doesn't have to be in one run. It will save across all your playthroughs, so no need to do an extra playthrough just for Mr. Raccoon collectibles. You will also need to open all safes and locks in the game. I'll go over them during these two initial runs, so you can play as you like for the two initial runs, so you can enjoy and experience the game to its fullest. If you don't want to get them now, get familiar so you can get them if you want to in future runs. During these two initial runs, you can get just about half of the trophies. You'll get these nine unmissable story trophies after completing your first two playthroughs. These other trophies you might get naturally, but here they are just in case you didn't know you could do this in the game. That'll hold them. Use wooden boards to board up windows in the police station. Eat this. Counter attack with a sub weapon. At some point, something will grab you. You have the option to use either a knife or the grenade. If you had one equipped, you can use them to counter the grab by losing the item in the process. That will actually get you the trophy, save a little bit of health, and maybe stop you from dying. Hip to add squares. Increase your inventory slots by getting one of the hip packs or hip pouches. A waste of space. Expand inventory slots to max by getting all the hip packs in one run. They are found here in normal. Only three will be available, so you cannot get the waste of space trophy during your hardcore run. So just keep that in mind. One is in the west storage room by the goddess statue. After you get the item you need from the goddess statue, the liquor will appear there. It's over there on the table. The second hip pack is in the safe in the west office on the first floor. The combination is always 9157 on an A run. The third hip pouch or hip pack is in the safety deposit room in locker 203. The keys you need are in the portable safes. One portable safe is on the third floor in the laundry room by the stars office. The laundry room needs the diamond key, which is in the morgue body locker in the parking garage. The other one is in the shower locker room in the corner. Put the keys in the security locker pad and you got yourself two more item spaces. Another hip pack is in the underground facility in the locker next to the item box and the typewriter. The fifth hip pack is in the workroom in the sewers. It's just sitting on a table and there's that one zombie that's on the ground there. Don't fall for his tricks. The last one is in the nap room in the beginning of the laboratories before the long bridges. You will need to come back here after you get the signal modulator from the west wing of the laboratory. Now you have 12 more spaces and a shiny new trophy. Next trophy, a vault like mind. Open a portable safe for free stuff. You'll need to figure them out as they, the order is randomized. I'd assigned a button with a number, like the upper left one is one, the upper right one is two, all the way down to like eight. So it's like one, two, then it's below that is three, four. And then I just remember like a phone number. You just need to figure out the order. You can always write it on a piece of paper if you're having a hard time, but that's just how I did it because um, I don't have a pen. Don't need no stinking gun. Defeat an enemy with a knife? You can shoot a zombie a couple times to speed things up. You just need to use the knife to get the killing blow. The basics of survival. Combine two items together, like two herbs. You'll get this at some point for sure. First break in, open a dial safe. You'll want to do this one. The goodies are so worth it. You'll usually contain like hip pouches or a gun upgrade or some ammo for some rare weapons. 
Master of Unlocking. Open all the safes and locks in the game. There is one safe in the West office on the first floor. The combo is 9-15-7, like I mentioned before, but for B runs, the combo will be 9-10-1. In the same room are two more locks to open either side of the desk. The code are November Echo Delta on the left side and Mike Romeo Golf on the right hand side. In the shower room is a locker combo lock. CAP is the password. Charlie Alpha Papa, C-A-P, CAP. Also in the shower room is a portable safe. How to open it is explained in the Vault Like Mine Trophy. Above the showers on the third floor, you'll come across another locked locker. The code is DCM, Delta Charlie Mike. In the waiting room on the second floor of the main room in the police station is a dial safe with the combo being 6 to 11. And in B run or B scenario runs, it'll be 6 4 15. Another lock is in the control room of the sewers that has three zombies in it. You're going to enter the code SZF Sierra Zulu Foxtrot. In the sewers, in the treatment pool room has the final dial safe. It's written on the left hand side of the safe. Customizer. Customize a weapon. You'll get this one too if you get things from inside the safe. Vermin Extermination. Destroy a Mr. Raccoon. I'll show you where they are in their own section since there are like 15 of them. Hats off. Shoot Tyrant's hat off his head. You might have to go out of your way to get this, especially if you're like me and just run from danger and want to save some bullets. Zombie Roundup. Kill three enemies at once with a sub weapon, AKA grenade. This is best done in the jail area or wherever you can muster up three things, but usually the jail area usually has plenty of zombies. Bon Appetit. Shoot the grenade you fed an enemy. Just equip the grenade or flashbang. When the zombie grabs you, feed it to him, her, or whatever gender you want to presume it is. You animal. And then just shoot the grenade. Easy. Like skeet shooting. Shoot a zombie dog or a liquor out of the air. Best for the dogs, but I got mine with liquors magically apparently, as you'll see here. Keep their heads ringing. Paralyze a liquor's sense of hearing. Use a flashbang on a liquor. The flash doesn't work, but the bang works wonders and will reset them so they don't know where you are again for a couple seconds. Treasure Hunter. Using the photo hints, find two hidden items. You'll at some point find some film rolls. Develop the one that says hiding places and go to those locations to collect the treasure and you'll pop this trophy. I don't think they're really worth going for besides for the trophy, but it was fun to figure out where they were. The hiding places film is in the workroom of the sewers. There was a zombie on the floor initially. The film is on the table opposite of the hip pouch in normal difficulty. To develop the film, you will need to develop the film in the dark room, which is located all the way back in the west wing of the first floor of the police station in the room on the bottom of the stairs. To get there, you need to have the key to the treatment facility room. To get that, you will need to get the key on the workstation before you actually have to go down to where those big slug things are and walk through the sewer waters in the lower section right where you get the queen and king pieces for one of the puzzles. Well, I'll show it to you here. Go back, develop the film, and it will show you two places you will need to go. Go to the star's office on the second floor. Behind the desk of the chief's office will be one of the item boxes. The second hiding place is in the press room of the first floor of the east wing and the desk on the left furthest from the door under the radio. Are the items necessary? Not really, but at least it wasn't a mimic that tries to eat you when you open it or Mr. X doesn't jump out and punch you in the throat or in the balls. Definitely glad that didn't happen. Defeat stage 2G using the crane only once for the gotcha trophy. During this part of the boss fight, you'll need to bring him to his knees three times. Once you do, hit him with the crane and bam, trophy time. The next three trophies you can only get during Leon's playthrough. Whether you do this on your initial two playthroughs is up to you, but you will be doing a few more runs, so no big deal if you miss it the first time around. Keep in mind too, during Ada's section, use only the EMF visualizer. When playing Ada, don't use the gun or even equip it. Dodge, duck, dodge, dive, dodge your way to the end and you'll get this trophy. I'll up when I did it in a separate video. It only takes about like 10 minutes. It's not that bad. Doing that, you'll get one slick super spy in the blink of an eye. Next thing you want to keep an eye out for is um, defeating the super tyrant with five plus minutes left until detonation. During Leon's playthrough, burn down the tyrant as soon as possible. You can also just hit him with the bazooka when cleaning up trophies and going for your frugalist run through. You will want to rush down ASAP to get more time. If you can get there like I did around seven minutes, you'll have plenty of time. I would run around and grenade or flashbang him to stun him and shoot his heart. If he stands and roars, unload into his heart with the most powerful weapon you've got. Shotgun, lightning hawk, 
grenades, whatever. Stun him to stop his unblockable. Use the rocket launcher and enjoy the magical sound of the trophy unlocking. A bonus trophy, Chasing Jill, which is all you have to do is read the letter Jill left behind. When you reach Kendo's gun shop, it'll be there before you meet Kendo. It's just right there on, I believe it's on the left hand side on one of the tables that's in the center by the shelves. Claire also has a couple trophies specific to her playthrough. Just remember to do this during her runs. Young escapee, escape the bedroom within 60 seconds during Sherry's segment. Do what I do in this video, but better. Doing that, you'll get the young escapee trophy. With time to spare, defeat stage 4G with four minutes left until detonation. This is easy to do if you have the minigun after you do your hardcore S plus run. If not, it's not that hard to do either. Um, just remember when he climbs up the walls, you can use the grenade on him. You'll just want to go ahead and pop his eyes as much as you can. Hopefully you have a lot of ammo. I forget the name of that gun, but it's like the taser gun. It's like a really hyped up version of the taser gun. That's actually really good against him. It's really strong. But yeah, if when he climbs, use a grenade on him. You can also just do it on accessible difficulty as well if you're having trouble. Here are the locations of Mr. Raccoon. There are only 15 in the main game. They are saved when you get them and can be collected across multiple runs. You can grab these real quick during the S or S plus run or during the special requirement runs afterwards. No big deal. First one's in the police station in the West office on the first floor on the top shelf. The second Mr. Raccoon is in the break room of the police station. By the bunk beds on the far wall behind a brown bag on the floor is a Mr. Raccoon waiting to be shot right in the face. In the firing range, there is a Mr. Raccoon in the actual firing range on the left by a target on the ground. Outside the chief's office on the second floor of the police station is a Mr. Raccoon that most won't miss. I mean, it's right there by some stairs that you're definitely going to have to go through at some point. So um, I'm sure you got this one. In the clock tower room, there is another room that leads to the hallway behind it. Go all the way to the back and you'll see him on the windowsill. The star's office on the second floor has a Mr. Raccoon on the right side of the room on a desk between some cardboard boxes and a monitor. This is a Leon only Mr. Raccoon collectible. In the sewer, after the alligator chase, it is on the left hand you side of the walkway before going up the bitch. ladder. So after the alligator, look on the left hand side, there's a little walkway up there and he's just right there. You'll see him. Another Leon only Mr. Raccoon. During Ada's segment, before going into the incinerator, Mr. Raccoon is on the right hand side or on the left hand side after you get out of the incinerator. After the bottom waterway and before the supply storage where the king and queen pieces are, are some stairs. At the top of the stairs, there is a lone table on the left hand side. Behind the table on the left hides the Mr. Raccoon. In the cafeteria, after the cable car ride, hides the Mr. Raccoon. With the ladder on the left, the Mr. Raccoon is on the right on a table against the far wall. In the nap room, after you get the signal modulator, come back here and open the nap capsules. Mr. Raccoon is in one of the capsules along with a zombie and I believe a hip pouch as well. On the second run of either character, in the bushes on the left hand side, before going into the police station gate, hides the Mr. Raccoon. The last three are Claire only Mr. Raccoon collectibles. In the east storage room on the third floor is another smaller storage room. After you enter on the left hand side above one of the crates of boxes is the Mr. Raccoon. Another Claire only collectible. In the bus where you go to meet up with Sherry, at the front of the bus on the dashboard is where Mr. Raccoon is hiding. It's one of the few Mr. Raccoon that actually look like it belongs there. When you enter the orphanage, go up to the second floor and open the door. Straight ahead in the storage cubicle in front of you is the final Mr. Raccoon. You can also do the same with the file collectibles for the lore explorer trophy there are a lot of file collectible videos already so i won't oversaturate it but i will show you the most missed files and the exclusive b-run only files on claire's run on the second floor bathroom of the orphanage is a collectible that only claire can get there's also a presentation podium on the west side of the labs before going into the oversized terrariums however this is only there after you get the wristband upgrade so once you get the upgrade for the wristband and you're going to go to the east side on the way over there, stop by the podium and look at that. That'll actually give you one of the files. This is actually one of the files I was missing for this trophy. After the cable car ride on the whiteboard in the same room as the item box is another note is likely to be missed due to the camera angle. Don't forget to actually look out on the characters on Claire and Leon the first time you play them. They actually come with a little note in there. So just read it just to make sure that the game actually reads that you actually read that file.
And the next two are the notes you get from Claire. And you'll actually see this in Claire's B Ren as well. So for Leon on the second floor of the star's office, Claire will leave a note for Leon. Claire will also leave a note on the sewer section of the cable car platform or the treatment pool room, I think it says on the map. And it'll be from Claire. On Claire's run, it'll be in the exact same location, the second floor of the star's office, but it's gonna be a note from Leon. As well as the same thing in the sewers of the cable car platform in the treatment pool room. Same location and everything, except for Claire's run, it'll be a note from Leon. If you have a lot of files left over and the ones I noted wasn't the ones you needed you can clean it up on the assisted difficulty with an infinite weapon doing the b scenario with leon making sure you get all of his files as you can and then doing claire's b scenario up until the cable car platform which is going to be leon's note now that you finish your first two initial playthroughs you're going to go for the hardcore s rank runs with leon and claire to get an S rank, you need to finish the game in less than two and a half hours. And I recommend just going for the S plus while you're at it. In order for you to do that, you need to finish the game in two and a half hours and only save three times. After you get all the medallions at the police station, when you go down those stairs, definitely make your first save there. For your second save, I would save after the cable car. And the final save, I would say, do that after you get the G sample or you can't find the G sample, depending on who you played. Thank God. The antiviral agent. Doing that, you'll get the S plus rank and you'll get the infinite weapons like the infinite rocket launcher or the infinite minigun. I will actually up my S plus runs in a separate playlist if you guys are interested. Now you'll need two more runs. These runs can be done with any character you choose. Try to also go for the small carbon footprint by getting under 14,000 steps in either of these runs. Also, don't forget you can use these runs to clean up any Mr. Raccoons you may have missed to obtain the complete Vermin Extermination Trophy. Do a Frugalist run and complete the game without using a recovery item. This will be a cakewalk with the Bazooka or the Gatling Gun. You can use either character you choose. The next run will be for the Minimalist Trophy. Just do this with either character you choose. Run through without opening the item box at all. This means you won't be able to use any infinite weapons you unlock by now, and um, you'll only save whenever you have a ribbon. You should be a pro at the game by this time. You can also combine this run with the one I just mentioned before, the Frugalist and the Small Carbon Footprint on assisted difficulty if you so choose. I got the Hardcore S Plus weapons, so I wanted to at least use them, so I opted to do a separate run for Minimalist. By now, just clean up whatever remaining trophies you've missed and collecting files for the Lore Explorer trophy. Then if you haven't already, complete the fourth Survivor Extra Mode to finish off all the trophies. Unlocking the Platinum Trophy, Raccoon City Native. Like I mentioned in the roadmap, you could try this trophy when you get tired of running the main story, as it is a great way to mix things up as playing Hunk and the DLC characters are a pretty different experience. I'll also go ahead and put my run through in a Resident Evil playlist if you are interested in watching how I did. I think I actually did it on my second playthrough. I actually did all the other DLC extra modes. It kind of prepared me for this one and it was a lot easier than some of the other ones. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or requests, or if I left something out, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell notification to be notified when the next video is out. I will leave a link to the roadmap for Resident Evil 2 and the Platinum Guide for Resident Evil Remake if you haven't got it already. I am Platinum Mike, and I'll see you on the leaderboards. Peace.